Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a loose crowd. Um, just going to be trying to sort of sketch in very, very loose impressionistic figures of people in a group, maybe in a park. I'm going to be following the advice of the artist Frank Clark, who said that rather than trying to um, paint people um, as people, to start off with a sort of loose carrot shape um, and then work on that, adding like a sort of a dot for the head and maybe other brush strokes to imply um, arms, legs, that sort of thing, and clothing. Um, so I'm going to be trying that, but I'm going to be doing it all in Payne's Grey and joining some of these characters up and rather than trying to paint the people in detail, I just want to sort of suggest through brush strokes and sketchy sort of rough marks that we've got a crowd of people, but without actually painting the people themselves. I'm using a small Chinese calligraphy brush and I'm rich, um, mixing up quite a rich mixture of the Payne's Grey. It's very pigmented um, because I just want to block in these shapes. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm painting these kind of elongated um, carrot shapes and then just adding dots and dashes and things. Now, these little marks that I'm making are going to be people that are further away, off into the distance, hopefully. Um, they'll be a part of the crowd, but a part of the distant crowd. I'm keeping all the heads at the same sort of level because everybody here within this crowd is standing on flat land. So their eye levels will all be around about the same sort of level. And that should give me the look of my crowd um, going back into the distance. It would be different if I was painting the people on, on a hill, but as I'm painting them on flat land, I'm going to keep them all roughly at the same level, but obviously getting much smaller um, the further back they go and more impressionistic. I'm using a piece of Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet um, and that size is um, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. I've got it taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees, something like that. Um, and I'm just going to paint these figures, or try to, um, where I've got a couple of figures next to each other, um, I've been joining them, and I think that can look quite effective. It, it adds a sort of different dynamic rather than just having all the figures sort of standing um, separately and isolated. Just trying to sort of get the look of movement in the figures rather than having them all um, looking very static. Um, this sort of group here I want to be together sort of having a bit of a conversation in the foreground. Just filling in a few more of these background characters and I'm putting a shadow underneath each figure and the groups of figures um, and this helps to ground them, but it also helps to link them together in, in the painting. Trying to bring these people just a little bit further forward, these, these distant ones, so that it doesn't just look as if I've got two or three different sort of rows of people. I want them to sort of look randomly scattered across, across the land. This sort of exercise is really good practice for your figures um, so that you can try painting as many as you can in a group 
and just see how it looks. Just just play around with it. And if you find figures intimidating, painting something like this is a really good exercise to do because by the time you finish this, you will have painted so many of these loose figures uh, that you'll probably be a lot more familiar with this um, this technique of suggesting the characters rather than overtly painting them in detail. Just making sure that the shadows are nice and dark underneath them. Um, I'm just going to come, come across a little bit further, put a few more people in. I'm going to have less people over on the left than I have on the right. I think maybe I'll have a child um, on this far side as a part of this sort of family group um, in the sort of uh, mid-ground here. Just going to fill in a few gaps um, in the, the far distant crowd. So it's the elongated carrot again. And just sort of pulling down for some sort of arms and legs. Just that sort of dot for the head, Try not worrying about whether it's completely round or not. quite nice just painting um, a tonal sketch like this just using the one color it's quite interesting that you can still get quite a lot of sort of variety to the shades and the marks even when you're um, just painting figures like this and mostly filling them in in silhouette I'm trying to leave some white space here and there um, just a few bits of, of white areas of maybe maybe clothing or near faces or slight gaps between people where they're standing. I think I've nearly got enough people. I think I'm just going to put in a few distant people um, around this fairly isolated foreground figure on the left. Not sure I'm happy with that crowd just there. Let's see if I can put a bit more work into the figures. It looks more like sort of bushes there rather than people. Might have to turn that into a tree at some point. We'll see how it looks when I've just done a few more um, tweaks here and there, just sort of darkening up some of the characters. Quite like that family group there. I think they look quite quite good. At the moment, I'm just focusing on painting figures just in in black or Payne's grey. Um, I think my next thing that I'll be trying to do is trying to use um, colour to paint the figures. So to put them maybe into a proper painting um, with full colour and try and see if I can paint... Um, clothes like coats and jackets and hats and things like that and and to get it to look convincing 
but at the moment I'm just focusing on trying to practice painting the figures in a sort of loose and sketchy way that works and then I'll move on to colour next because I, I, I think that's that's quite difficult or at least I find that quite challenging. I think that will do for the people. Now I'm taking Payne's Grey Rich Mixture on my flat brush. I'm going to sweep that across for a very loose, rough foreground. Just letting the brush jump here and there so that I don't get a flat line. I get some dry brush, I get some dark paint, some sort of much lighter areas. And it just implies foreground. Now I'm going to use my little old bristle brush and spatter some texture across the foreground, just sort of making this up really. I'm just going to set, try and see if I can set these figures into a bit of context and, and make it look as if they are actually somewhere rather than just floating in space. Now I've, I'm going to wet across the top of the page and use very dilute very diluted Payne's Grey. I'm just going to sweep that across with my large Harky brush across just for a little bit of sky. Just a bit of tone there just to sort of uh, bring the painting together a little bit more. Just try and make it a little bit darker across the top just balances things up a bit. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to take the tape off and just have a closer look and see if I think that looks okay. Um, I think the people look all right um, for the most part. I think my foreground figures stand out from the background but I'm still not happy with the little area right on the right corner so I'm going to retape my paper onto the board again just so that if I paint over the tape I'll get a nice I'll maintain that nice white edge um, and I think I'm just going to turn that group of people into a tree but first I'm going to put just a few shadows coming in across the tape so it looks as if they maybe are from people that are out of sight um, and not in the picture but you can still just about see a little bit of shadow I think that just adds a little bit more to it and now I'm going to mix up a nice strong mixture of my Payne's Grey and it's sort of a do or die really I'm going to turn these people into um, a distant tree. Bringing it over the tape and just using sort of scribbly marks with the calligraphy pen. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but I'm going to bring it across a little bit more, put some trunk shapes through it, and hopefully it will look okay. I should dry back a, a little bit lighter than this. I think it needs to come over a little bit further into the picture as well, but I'm trying to bring it across, but without um, obscuring too many of these foreground people, if possible mid-ground people. Just see if I can take out some branches just to sort of lighten it up a little bit so it looks less solid with the corner of a plastic card just scratching through the paint there. There's a shadow under the tree as well that helps to link it into the painting. Maybe just dot around the edges a little bit just to lighten the tree up so it's less of a sort of a solid lump. A 
Yeah, it just needs to come over a little bit further and I will be slightly obscuring those characters there but um, I shall I shall dab um, the tree out a little tiny bit with the tissue so that it dries a bit lighter and you can see here I've darkened up the characters so they look as if they're standing in front of the tree I think that looks a lot better um, just to balance the composition up I'm going to do the same over this side behind these distant figures but with much paler paint um, very watery I'm just going to run a line of distant very distant trees along the horizon line sort of behind these people if I'm quick and careful I shouldn't um, I shouldn't disturb the paint that I've used to paint the characters if I can just run the paint across very very quickly uh, without scrubbing too much with my brush the dark paint where the characters um, are it's completely dry so hopefully I won't disturb that I can just paint through it I don't think I'm going to go completely across the back I'm just going to go a little bit further along, keeping it very loose and very pale um, to suggest the distance. just trying to decide whether or not to put a little bit more in whether to bring it across just a bit further I think with some very pale paint if I just put another tree just there sort of very pale so it looks like it's going further back into the distance and I think that will do right time to peel off the tape um, and, and have a look at this, this crowd, this sketch, um, pulling away from the, the painting. This new tape that I've got is much stickier than my last tape and it has been just slightly tearing the paper in places. So I am being very careful to pull it away from the painting. Um, I'm quite pleased with this as a, as a sketch, um, just really scribbling away and, and painting these very strange shapes um, and trying to get them to look like characters and people. And I think it's 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 really quite a satisfying thing to do. And I would encourage you to have a go and to practice painting your people like this. It can seem quite intimidating to paint people because if you put a, a character into your painting and if it doesn't work, then that's the painting ruined. But if you practice on scrap paper or in your sketchbook until you feel confident, then you can end up with adding some lovely touches of life in your paintings uh, when you add figures. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much to my lovely patrons who support me and this channel over on Patreon. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.